Hi, in this video we're going to look at finding the Laplace transform of a piecewise defined function. So we've got a piecewise function given here at the top and then below that I have two lines from our table of Laplace transforms that we've been using in class. And so both of those lines use that unit step function and just remember that that function is 0 when t is less than a and 1 when t is greater than or equal to a. All right, so we're going to use that and start by rewriting our f of t function using that unit step function. So essentially we're going to use that unit step function as an off on switch so that when I have zeros and ones I have terms turned on or off. All right, so I'm going to start with f of t equals t. That's how our piecewise defined function starts and I have that function until t equals 2. So at t equals 2, I want that function to go away. So I'm going to use my unit step function to turn on a term that will cancel out my t term that I started with. So I started out with this t function and then my unit step function at t equals 2. Remember that that u2 of t will be 0 when t is less than 2, so that term won't even be there when t is less than 2, but when t is 2 or bigger, I will end up with t minus t times 1, so those two terms will cancel out. All right, and then also at t equals 2, I want to turn on the cosine pi t function, so I'm going to take that times a unit step function at t equals 2. So again, remember when t is less than 2, that u sub 2 function will be 0, so that whole term will go away when t is less than 2. And then at t equals 2 and larger, that u sub 2 will be 1. So I'll have t minus t plus cosine pi t, so I'll just be left with the cosine pi t at t equals 2 and later. And then at t equals 4, I want that cosine pi t function to go away or turn off, so I'm going to subtract that function times u sub 4 of t. So when t is less than 4, that whole term will be gone. So when t is between 2 and 4, I will have t minus t plus cosine pi t minus 0. That last term will be gone. So I'll just have the cosine pi t term when t is between 2 and 4. But at t equals 4 and later, this last term will cancel out here. Okay, so I now have written my function using this unit step function, and so I want to look a little bit at this table of Laplace transforms and these two lines involving the unit step function. So line 19 on our table is just for a unit step function all by itself. I don't have any terms like that. All of my terms in this problem are functions of t times a unit step function, so that's really line 20. And so the important thing to notice here is that that function of t that's times that unit step function needs to involve t minus a. Remember too that this unit step function, I wrote it using subscripts here, but it can also be written using subtraction, u of t minus 2. And so I need this function in front here to be in terms of t minus 2 as well. And the same is true on that next term. I've got a unit step function stepping at t equals 2. So I need the input for that function there to be t minus 2. And then for the last term, that unit step function steps at t equals 4. So I need this t here to be t minus 4. All right, so in order to do that, I can go ahead and subtract the 2s and 4s where I need them to be as long as I add 2s and 4s to balance that. So the key is to making sure that your algebra balances so that you're not changing the function. Okay, so I've gone ahead and written my function with my t minus 2s and t minus 4 where I want them to be. And in order to balance that out, I had to add 2 and add 4 also to keep that balance so that I'm not changing the actual function. All right, what I need to do next is kind of break that apart, use some algebra to simplify that because I really don't want that plus 2 and the plus 4 inside there. So you're going to use algebra to simplify that, and the algebra is going to be different depending on what kind of functions you have. 
for this first term here, I can just multiply my minus sign through and also distribute through the u sub 2 of t. So I'm just using a distributive property on that first term. And so I can simplify that way on the first term. Okay, so that part that I've written right there comes from simplifying my t minus 2 plus 2 with a minus sign out front, all times u sub 2 of t. All right, for these last two, I can't just distribute things through. I can distribute through a pi, but I can't distribute through a cosine function. So there's a couple ways to simplify that. One is you can use a trig identity if necessary. In this particular problem, you might notice that because of the shift that I made here and the periodic nature of those cosine functions, you could maybe skip ahead and see what it's going to be when it simplifies if you think about the period of the trig functions and what this plus 2 and plus 4 do. I'm going to go ahead and simplify this using a trig identity just so you can see why that works the way it does. So I'm going to use the trig identity for cosine of a plus b. First I'll go ahead and distribute through the pi on those. All right, so at this step the problem's gotten kind of long here, but I went ahead and distributed the pi so that I could separate what's inside that trig function into what's going to be my a and what's going to be my b. So the a will involve the t minus 2 that I want, and the b would be kind of the leftovers that I want to separate off. So let's go ahead and write that whole thing out using those trig identities. Okay, so I've used my identity for cosine of a plus b and written out those last two parts there uh, with the part I want with the t minus a and then the leftover part. And then you'll see that we'll get a lot of nice simplification here. Cosine of 2 pi and cosine of 4 pi are both 1. And sine of 2 pi and sine of 4 pi are both 0. So these whole last terms go away here. So I'm left with just cosine of pi times t minus 2 and cosine of pi times t minus 4. Let me go ahead and write this in that simplified form. Okay, I am now ready to do the Laplace transform. So I'm going to scroll up and point out something about that table though, just as we're ready to do that. So I've got two lines in the table that are relevant here. I do have one term in my expression now where I will use that Laplace transform, but most of the terms in my expression involve some function f of t minus a that is times that unit step function. So when I do that Laplace transform, I just need to be clear about what it's telling me. So I'm going to have e to the negative a s, where the a is the a that I've shifted the unit step function and my f of t function and then the capital F of S. So we just want to be clear about what that notation represents. Remember that capital F of S is just the generic notation that we've been using for the Laplace transform of little f of t. But the key is that in our expressions here, we're going to have f of t minus a. So we need to be able to identify what is that f of t function that has the t minus a substituted into it and that will tell us what function we're going to have here for our capital F of S. All right, so there's a little bit of kind of extra thinking going on on some of these terms. When I apply the Laplace transform, I will get the Laplace transform of T. That's just an ordinary Laplace transform like we've been doing for a long time. So you just look that up, you get 1 over S squared. And then for the next term here, my A is 2. This is u sub 2 of t or u of t minus 2. And then my f of t function that has been shifted two units to the right is really f of t equals t with t minus 2 substituted in. Okay, so when I do the Laplace transform of that, that's using that line 20 on that table, I end up with e to the negative 2s times capital F of s capital F of S is the Laplace transform of our little f of t, this f of t equals t. 
So Laplace transform of T is 1 over S squared. So there's a little bit of extra thinking there, identifying what is the function that has been shifted however many units to the right. Okay, and then our next term here, I'll have minus 2, and then that is the term that's just the Laplace transform of just the unit step function all by itself. So that's line 19 in our table with A equals 2. And then on the next term here, I've got a function times the unit step function. So our unit step function has A equals 2, and then the function that has been shifted right to is f of t equals cosine of pi t. So cosine of pi t is the function I'm going to use to get my capital F of s. All right, so Laplace transform of the product of those two things, I will get e to the negative 2s times capital F of s. Capital F of s is the Laplace transform of cosine of pi t. So I'll get s over s squared plus pi squared. All right, and then one more term here. On this last term, my a is 4. And again, my function that's been shifted 4 units to the right is f of t equals cosine of pi t. So I have the Laplace transform of cosine of pi t, s over s squared plus pi squared. Okay, at that point, I have found the Laplace transform of the piecewise defined function. There are maybe some terms you would want to combine if you would like to, but remember that this is really just one step in probably solving a differential equation that involves piecewise defined functions. So how you might simplify it might depend on what's going on in the rest of the differential equation. Okay, so make sure you practice some of these problems before you jump into the differential equations that involve problems like this so that you're clear about how to do this step.